Welcome you all back to another episode of Human Humane Architecture with your discussion board, DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang. How do you do? I'm great. Good. And we're broadcasting live yes, from Honolulu, Hawaii, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which there's no doubt this week we are the metropolis, the epicenter mm -hmm. of mid-century mm -hmm. modern architecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because the National uh, Organization of Doko Momo has yes. selected us to have their national symposium here with that's right. us. That's right. And that's gonna happen this week. And should if we, we go can, to our next yeah, slide? We yeah, should go to the first the, slide. First slide up here. And this shows a there. couple of events. At the bottom left is basically the main uh, event postcard. It has chosen the Kahala Apartments by Killingsworth and Partner as the main project the in here. Uh, Ron Lindgren, who is a partner of Killingsworth, is giving a talk with Don mm -hmm. Hibbert. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Graham Hart, as the current president, is orchest orchestrating everything. And we did a show uh, where he announced the whole program. His partner, uh, Denali, has done just a great uh, exhibit about yeah. uh, one of the exotic entrepreneurs on the island, Pete Wimbley, that you had done a show about a while and ago. And I see a picture in the upper right left corner of the, of the hyperbolic paraboloid of the yeah. uh, Waikiki and Lobby. You can say that tongue breaker well, mm -hmm. exactly. That's at Fish Cake. It's an awesome uh, exhibit. Thanks, Denali, for doing that. And then the thanks to uh, Bandit Kanista Khan, on the right is an exhibit up at the School of Architecture in the gallery that's uh, pointing out the treasures of mid-century of the University of Hawaii and East West Center, as right. you can see, where we also dedicated a couple of shows. Right, and parts of some of the symposium will be held there, in fact. Exactly, exactly. So uh, go there, participate. We thought we need to contribute to that, so our donation, we were thinking, what can we add to the program right. that isn't already covered? And in the, in the program postcard, it says a multicultural context. So if we go to the next slide, you being Hawaiian and me German can get more multicultural exactly. than that one, right? Exactly, opposite so, sides of the earth. Exactly, so we wanna go back to the end of my sabbatical here, where our cross-cultural culinary, culinary connoisseurs, Clara and Joey, on their voyage yeah. to shaved ice, yeah. uh, taking a little detour to the little different corporate side of that culture where it originally comes from, which is Japanese. Yes, correct. And they will be for a little while in the capital of Germany in Berlin. And then on their way there, they took this sort of, they got that rented Fiat 500, which uh, we have here now. And I was about to say we, do we did we ever have them here and yeah. you proved yes and I proved I, yes. shame on me I didn't for, I forget to put that That's right because I sent there, you right? a photograph of you. some new fiats being delivered to new owners in Honolulu in 1960 or 61 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You So did, they were you here did. I will provide that next time I All promise right. All right This red one was for sale it was 10,000 euros so what does it have to do with uh, mid-century architecture these are gems, yep. and even from an economical point of view, it makes sense to keep them mm -hmm. because they become collectibles and they're mm -hmm. keepers for that regards. Right. Hopefully our little uh, investigating frog, our Twingo, our 96 Twingo <laughs> as well. So, and the, the project we know, because that's the office home, yes. and that was an, a character, an actor character in one of the prime crime time architecture uh, shows in Germany there. Yes. And so, um, you know, Joey and Clara being good cooks, they, uh, we spent a night there and uh, they fixed some nice meal for me, some pasta, talking yes. fiat, fix yeah. it again, Tony, they fixed some meal. Yeah, and, so, and then um, what? And then what? We thought we watched something. Right. And did you think we were watching German TV? Apparently not. Apparently, Apparently not. not. Uh, they want to eventually come and join us here. Yeah. So that's what they love. And so right. let's go to the next slide. Thanks to this gentleman who is the best island, uh, uh, dentist on the island in, in the world that I know, Aaron Colby. And I'm not having any business relationship yeah, yeah. to that, so that's not you're where just, I'm coming from. But you're just from. being nice to him because he was nice to you. He, because he fixed me up, as you can see there. Yeah. And in he order pulled out to, that nasty tooth with exactly, a big hole in exactly. it. Exactly. And yes. again, I brushed my teeth well, but this was a wisdom tooth tucked so back, so I didn't have a chance, which he covered me. Yep. And Aaron is, when we're always talking about, you know, coming from our sort of historic 
yeah. perspective from a historian and as an architect. What about the users? Are they with us mm -hmm. as easy breezy, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and he is because I got to know him when he had his uh, office, his dental office, as your dentist was, as yes. you told me, as I think 20% of the island dentist population were in our favorite Alamoana building Correct. way back. And he said again, I am not an open heart surgeon, so I can basically practice in easy breezy conditions. He, uh, what he has now is this most stunning view here. Uh, this is in his patient room, and that's you sit on the chair and he takes care of you, and you look at that, can't be more stunning. And what he points out to is the project we want to talk about. And that gets us right. to the next slide. And you know we've been uh, sort of tiptoeing around uh, that person in a couple of shows about the, being the, having been the initiator of the Kaiser Hawaiian Village at yes. that time, having yes. been the client of the Kaiser Dome. He wanted to bring these cars to the island. And uh, we did a show with Rick Prala, who owns one of his early homes that he did out in Hawaii Kai right. for the middle class people, which yes. is an absolutely wonderful. And our exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, has been in Hawaii Kai some 20 years ago. So let's go to Hawaii Kai. Let's go to the next slide. Because the symposium is had to make a choice to be rather sort of urban centric yeah, about yeah. Honolulu. Right. And we get to UH and we get to downtown, but you know, that's pretty much it. Right. And honestly speaking, if you go more west, you know, Makaha, as we did a show, isn't existing anymore. And then, you know, uh, obviously Alani, we don't want count. No, and there's Ihilani talking killings worth. Totally worth. And we're gonna do a couple of shows with Ron Lindgren, as we said. So if you go out on the other side, going out east, you of course have Kahala, yeah. but then you have Hawaii Kai. Mm -hmm. and, and Hawaii Kai isn't normally probably, you know, for, we're probably unfair, but it's not as known as a mid-century gym right. as the other locations. Right? Yeah, and Hawaii Kai uh, was developed in such a, over a long period of time, mm -hmm. it's got so many different architectural styles. There's not a lot of the very original beginning yeah. of it that's yeah, yeah. truly what we would consider archetypal yeah. yeah. mid-century yeah, material. Yeah. And as is typical with a lot of the inexpensive homes of that time, many have been altered. Yeah. So they don't look the yeah. way they did yeah. Yeah. in the 60s. And that was mainly around on the on the left, uh, you know, Googling snapshot here around these lagoons. Yes. But there is a more privileged part of that. Correct. And that's Portlock, the neighborhood of Portlock. Correct. And that's where the project is that we want to go to and check it out today. And next slide here, here's our PIing mobile that drives along. And you actually don't see, you see a rock wall. And mm -hmm. we did a couple of shows about the tradition and yep. the potential evolution of that on the island. And next slide. Luckily, by the time we were driving by, the gate opened, so we got a peek, and you would usually say, wow, now I can see the house yeah. that's behind, but not so much, and we will explain later right. why that is. Why that is, right. And next slide here, there is a plaque there, so it's on the register, and it's a historic residence here, and it tells us the data of built in 59 by the architect George Wright, who has nothing to do with Frank Lloyd Wright, who many consider to be the most right. famous, famous American, American architect. architect. And they give it some kind of classification. They say it's international style and it's Miesian. And you know, we have been uh, basically not doing what they suggest here, being a viewing point in every second Saturday going, but we encourage the audience to basically do it. Mm -hmm. We try to do it as an appetizer our way, which we will share with you. Correct. But our investigation got us to next slide to the institution that's sort of putting things on the register, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the description from the application here. And uh, it traces, again, it says Miesian, so that's obviously Mies van der Rohe, the great American architect who basically made his career in America because he was kicked out by the Nazis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, it intrigued you that I choose the top right image on the left, right? And not a typical Miesian building, like the Staatsgalerie in Berlin is my favorite, one of my all-time favorite, but I picked something else. This is an astonishing picture to me because I looked at that picture with this Mercedes automobile in front of it and looked at the house behind it and thought, maybe that's in California. Mm -hmm. And you told me that in fact, this is the bungalow, and it's actually called a bungalow, mm -hmm. that is used by the West, was used by the West German president. Yeah. So it doesn't look presidential to me. It looks like a middle-class home in the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. And it's because in the time period in which this was built, 
Germany was anxious to divest itself of its past Absolutely. and not do things architecturally that looked either like the Nazis no. or the militaristic type of attitude that had been prevalent in Germany. They wanted to break with that. And what yeah. did they do? They built this spare, clean, yeah, yeah. austere yeah. home exactly. for the president. Exactly. And your, your weekly German language lesson I is don't remember what Kanzler was. Bungalow. Kanzler so Kanzler is Kanzler. the chancellor. Oh, Kanzler pretty Bungalow. Much. Kanzler Bungalow. Did well. Get All right. Thank you. For that thank one. you. Thank you. And the next slide here, there is another source, which is a previous show that John Williams and then B. Fawcett did. But as you can read down there, it says the works of Edwin Bauer. So they were featuring the building here. And what in the world does Edwin Bauer have to do with right. Mr. Wright and the Kaiser and House? The Kaiser House. And we get to the next slide, and they were telling the fascinating story that uh, basically. Um, uh, uh, Bauer was involved in the Kaiser Hawaiian village. Right. And that way uh, became the sort of the local contact project architect mm -hmm. that was assisting Mr. Mm -hmm. Wright, who mm -hmm. was a mainland architect. Right. So that right. was the relationship between them. And go to the next slide, because other than that, and Denby basically, this is just an appetizer. We should do another show with Denby because she said Correct. she has childhood memories uh, from the house. Then Don was recommending uh, David Stringer who was the one who brought Kaiser to the island, mm -hmm. and he's still around. And then there is Lorraine uh, Minatoshi, who basically did remodeling of the house. So there are many people out there, and this is just an appetizer once yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And there was us using, again, that with uh, Clara and Joey fixing us nice pasta, right. and we turned on my uh, computer, my laptop, and I had this box with me that traveled with me. Absolutely, right? so let's go back to the studio and what do we got here? We've got the box set of all the episodes of the original Hawaii Five-O. It all means 278, <laughs> right, and uh, from 12 seasons. And this is the first set here, right. and we stayed with the very first because we thought we might as well start at the yeah, beginning. at the beginning. So as uh, when we go back to the slide that we just had, as we can read on the website, the episode, the first one ever shot was in this house, right. but it wasn't aired as the first one, but as the fourth, which fourth doesn't make episode, a big right. difference, right. Right? right? So it must have been very prominent. And we, we do the timeline yeah. in 57. 67. Uh, why do I always I do don't know, that? I don't it's know, just no, no. like anyway. not getting into yeah. my, I get the 50s, 50s and 60s, and the 60s you confused. don't see, it's like Although one I big thing. Although I even wear a shirt that's supposed to exactly. remind Exactly, we're supposed to one. talk about that. So anyway, anyway, so in 67, yeah. Kaiser had died, yeah. right? And in 68 is when Hawaii 5 started, there. and they did the first one. So they, you said they probably had the opportunity to get Correct. into the house because it was unoccupied, unoccupied at that point. Correct. Right? That's right. That's right. So let's now, let's do movie time. You yeah. know, where's the pasta here? I don't know where the pasta and wine is, but uh, let's go through uh, next slide. Uh, from here on, it's basically us uh, screenshotting. Yeah the moments that we found the most representative for what's going on. And here you can see uh, the daughter of the main um, owner of the house in the, in, the, in the movie, scripted. It's basically getting out of a Rolls Royce Phantom here in a very 60-ish dress, mm -hmm. right? And oh, in yeah. the back, you can see the original, actually, I think under construction, if you look closely, yeah. uh, a Kaiser Hawaiian yeah. village, right? Yeah. And then the next picture is 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 next. Where is that, DeSoto? Well, you pointed out that that is at the basis. Uh, that's at the base of one of the uh, Hawaii Village towers. The Lagoon Tower. Lagoon Tower. So we are tying in the Kaiser Hawaiian Village Hotel and the Kaiser Estate, yeah. even though Henry J. Kaiser had died by the time this and was being shot. As we pointed out in previous shows, and you know, uh, Edwin Bauer is one of the. Uh, favorite architects of yeah. many of my board members, as Graham Hart is, and as John Williams is, and as others are. And Lagoon Tower is one of the prime yes. Edwin Bowers buildings. So you can see that it was scripted mm -hmm. once again into that Correct. episode. Correct. The kind of networking and background of right. architects very cleverly. Right. right. So uh, next picture here is basically probably a helicopter yes. flight approaching a lot. And mm -hmm. as you can see here, uh, you get, see the main setup. It's actually it was comprised of uh, a couple of different buildings, but we want to point out just one building. But when we go to the next slide, we you know, see before, something. Before I say, yeah, before yeah. you go mm -hmm. on, in the previous photograph, you could see 
That's a big boathouse at the lower yeah, part on yeah, the right, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's painted pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, because yeah, pink that. mm -hmm. was the favorite color of Henry J. Kaiser and his second wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of the heavy construction equipment mm -hmm. that worked on Hawaii mm -hmm. Kai mm -hmm. was all painted pink. That's absolutely right. And yeah. that was a kooky thing at the time. And go to the next slide. Yeah, he tried to so hard sell, and the round buildings are actually for her poodles. And wasn't that something yeah, that her yeah, poodles yeah. were also pink? Yeah, yeah, are there yeah. pink poodles? Uh, they were. Know. They had pink Christmas trees. I can <laughs> all tell you right, that. all yeah. right. But there's something else remarkable that you see there. The whole other yeah. uh, backside of the road isn't even developed yet. And Correct. this is, as you pointed out, is all suburbanized, all yeah. built, right? Now it is. Yeah. Now it is. Yeah. And so let's go to the next slide. Uh, while principally we have to say thanks to Lorraine and others having worked on the house, the house hasn't uh, had the same fate as we were saying many of the original yeah. houses yeah. mid-century that were altered so drastically. So the house in general, that's why it's on the register, has not been, but in parts it has. So this very sort of kooky, yeah. Uh, space AG sort of Hawaiiana interpretive yeah. mid-century gate is unfortunately, as we saw when we drove, we were right. driving by, not existing anymore. Correct. Right. Go to the next slide. So here is again McGarrett's Mercury. We call you call them the boats here because they yeah. were so big, right? And you see, so is the architecture. There is this very sort of low line horizontal mm -hmm. uh, kind of grandeur as language, both in the vehicular, so both in the yeah, mobile right, and the right, immobile, right. as we like to yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah. And then you were pointing out the breeze blocks, and that makes us jump to the next slide here, because while McGarrett is always, we do this show about skin soon, yeah, we promise, yeah, right? Yeah. And he's always dressed very inappropriately for of the course. hot climate, always yeah. tied up, yeah. and you know. And so this lady here is actually the, the daughter of the, the owner who are scripted to be Japanese, basically has a very sort of easy breezy dress on. Absolutely, right. And right. We, we get to that interesting uh, sort of reference to some more architecture pretty soon. So let's go uh, to the next slide here. And, you know, I was reading in the description of the application for the register that they said, you know, the entrance is actually more like of a mid-size hotel in its grandeur and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's just gestural, you know, mm -hmm. it's so... But plain. But it is plain, yeah. And we pointed out it, it has familiarity because of that with, with another building right. of the, uh, the other most rich person here in, in, on the island of Hawaii, and we get there in a, in a little bit, right? Yeah. Let's go to the next slide here. Um, the... Uh, yeah, and we, we can already say it now. What's the other project we were thinking about that is, as, has the same kind of attitude? Shangri-La, right? Shangri-La, absolutely. The, the Doris Duke home exactly. has a very similar attitude in that there is a walled-off mm -hmm. part. It, 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 it's a private world. Yeah. From the outside, you just see a wall yeah. and one entrance. Yeah, yeah. When you go through that entrance, then you're in the grand private yeah, world, yeah, yeah. which yeah, yeah. isn't visible to the outside. And that's, that's so different to today, where we sort of readopted mm -hmm. that sort of Victorian attitude of like Show showing off. off. Showing off, right. exactly. And then right. you're disappointed once you go that fake facade. It's like, <laughs> exactly. okay. So here's the opposite way, exactly. And there are these, uh, this opening is fairly, it doesn't really come across, but it's like a 10 by 10 opening. So mm -hmm. these are huge doors. And I bet that that just is a grill that is completely open. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy so breezy, right? It's easy this breezy. Is There's air movement And you were there. saying most likely this was probably not air conditioned I think this back. is probably he not probably air conditioned. He could have afforded, but he could it was have designed it. in a way to say, I take advantage we'll of, take the advantage of the natural breezes. Exactly. Right. Let's look at the floor. Let's go to the next uh, Material, uh, slide here, and this is where the a ring comes off, and the ring plays a major role in the in the thing. While at the top, this is a uh, um, uh, a detail of one of Mies van der Rohe's most prominent buildings, the Barcelona Pavilion. Yeah, and it was using travertine a lot, yeah. and travertine is a very dominant material. But the entrance uh, surface, as well as we heard around the pool was this sort of epoxy resin, yeah. a pebble yeah. ingrained kind of thing that is, as we read, is not existing anymore. They have replaced it in the pool area with material that matches the marble of the pool. Right. And you said this was very proponent to being, it, it not came being apart. able to live up to the no, harsh. And it fell uh, off, and so I'm sure that's why it was removed, because exactly. eventually, particularly outdoors in full sun, this just came apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next picture here is another similarity to Mies which is from the, this is a detail up there from the house Tugendhat that was built in the 1930s in the, what's now the Czech Republic. 
And there's a travertine floor, and also this is this cruciform column comprised mm -hmm. of three angles, and this is exactly what this house here has. Right. Next slide. Uh, another similarity uh, is here to America and Richard Neutra and yeah. the Kaufman house is basically floor to ceiling glass. Yes. yes. And notice that the top mullion is not there. Right. So it, it is tried. They try to to make it look as as little as a, yeah. as much as possible as a barrier. It's very dematerialized. It's very right? dematerialized. Mm -hmm. So inside and outside yeah. visually seem to all be the same thing because there's so little uh, around those glass windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next slide here. While um, top right is basically Shangri-La and, yeah. and Doris Duke went a little further and we mm -hmm. see what she was inspired of, which we just talked about. This is that phenomenal glass wall that can go all the way down. Correct can be moved down with a humongous sort of mechanism to Correct. do that, right? Elevator mechanism. Yeah, and they had they had more simple sliding doors, you know, but still very, I mean, they were huge, right? Correct. And I read that they make sense. Uh, Kaiser was the aluminum magnet. Absolutely. They were actually aluminum framed. Right, so they weren't as heavy. No, and the, but the sea salt got to them over yeah. the time, so they replaced it by brong, with brongs yeah. now, which, which is, makes sense. Which is fine, I right. guess. Next slide here. Um, is actually up there to the right is the Tugendhat house because the Tugendhat house had the same feature. So we could say Doris Duke probably yeah. 10 years later yeah. in the 40s adopted that from uh, the Miesian Tugendhat house. And here then uh, a decade later, basically architect Wright and Edwin Bauer adopted that sort of awning feature, yeah. right, as a shading, because otherwise, you know, given the, the orientation, yes. you get baked, right? So this exactly. is a biochromatical device. Right. Right. And you can see probably as sort of architectural archaeology here, you know, doing that. These, they were, do look similar. these were the inspirations. Next slide, a very prominent feature. What was that, Soto? Well, this is the spiral stairway, and it's this remarkable, you said it's a 10 foot in diameter, yeah. precast or pre made concrete, concrete yeah. object. Mm -hmm. It has a railing only on one side, on the mm -hmm, outside, mm -hmm. not on the inside. Mm -hmm. And you said that this leads up to the roof mm -hmm. where there was a helicopter pad. And actually still is. And still, is, still is that Henry J. Kaiser could get in to be yeah, yeah. taken to other places. Yeah, yeah. The remarkable thing, and actually to, to the Hawaiian Village Hotel, mm -hmm. which there's a helicopter mm -hmm. landing space exactly. there as well. Yeah. I find it remarkable that he was able to walk up that stairway yeah. because he was very overweight yeah. and elderly. And, up and, and that, I would point, think, yeah. would be kind of a tough yeah. climb for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you can see there is no filling in there. There is no balustrade. It's yeah. just that one thing that that's continuous, one, yeah. that, that, yeah. that, that, that round thing that's yeah. pretty remarkable as, yeah. as architectural detailing. So let's go up on the roof and go to the next slide here. And one thing that's also not there anymore to the degree it, it used to be, and I put in the reference to one of the architects we're excited about, and you will eventually, when you go to New York City next, you yeah. will and stay a night at the TWA right. uh, terminal in the past and now converted to a hotel. So Aero Saren and the architect in 57 did the Miller House here, and he was using this sort of skylights in a very dramatic way. And we yeah. read that this house had that as well, but they're not there oh. anymore the way they used to be. Right. But again, this is us. The big picture is us peeking over the basalt rock wall. And, and once again, because there is a slope, it slopes down to the ocean. And since this is a one-story bungalow, you actually hardly ever see Correct. From the, the building from, right. from that. Yeah. But uh, so privacy. And, di Private and, world. and in addition to going exactly, in addition to going up to the helicopter, you can go up to something else. And this is another interesting historic oh, yeah. architectural archaeology finding. And go to the next slide because when the daughter basically and McGarrett basically go up on the roof, you can see in the back the daughter hiding behind this sort of crescent. Yeah. Uh, convex, uh, giving a concave space wall. And that one um, we remember from, uh, next slide, we remember <laughs> from 1961 again. This is when <laughs> Hawaii Kai got developed got by started, Kaiser. Right. And that is the year when uh, Jean-Luc Godard did the, um, what is it, was it called? The Medri was, was the, the movie's name that mm -hmm. he made. And uh, the star was the, at that time, very young Brigitte Bardot. 
And as, as the French have always been, and I guess will mm -hmm. always be, less mm -hmm. prude. Yes. Uh, she was shown in the way nature made her so beautifully. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. she's shown topless sunbathing there. Yeah. And behind as, that wall. Behind that wall. And as you said, you know, as, uh, uh, I guess, America in general, to be honest, right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, having annexed and Correct. hijacked Hawaii, not exactly. any different here. We're not quite as naked no. as you no. concluded one of the last shows anymore. Right. But she, with her di diaphanous mm -hmm. sort of top, gets a little closer to that. And where is that? Where is that Brigitte Bardot building? Okay, yeah, thank you. So this rock up there literally is the on the island of Capri. That's right. 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 Again. And then there was a recent, uh, I think. Um, Ralph Lauren shooting with the oh. actress Kate Moss and, and excessively again sort of reshooting the house. Yeah, so course. this is another sort of this a very dramatic. This is another, yeah. Yeah, this is another yeah. marvel. So let's phase out here in the last three minutes here, last uh, next couple of slides here. So unfortunately, we're saying, well, why would we? We always talk about the inclusive versus Correct. the exclusive. So right. why are we right. even doing a, a, a show about one of the you know, a most expensive a home. Mansion. Because we want to point out that what was so great about mid-century was that everything was in taste and everything was modern. Might it be super rich or moderate or yeah. modest in yeah. typology or in price or in budget? While today, if we drive back to town, this is going on Kahala Road, where this is how it looks like. These are super big mansions. They're all stuck out together. They're a termite food construction, mm -hmm. and they all make no sense, and they're air-conditioned. Yeah. But in all honesty, you know, as an educator and architect, next slide, if I look at uh, these, they make me even more angry because they want to come across as modern. Yeah. You know, they're boxy, yeah. geometric, and Angular. have supposedly, you know, cool materials as wood. I think they're backstabbing the, the mission of modernism even more because they want to come across as in this tradition, but they're doing it equally less at the other yeah. ones. These are hermetic, these are air conditioned. Yeah. These shouldn't be here, right? Yeah. And we got different challenges these days on the islands rather than way back because Kaiser's Hawaii Kai was mm -hmm. a neighborhood for the people, yeah. which could fulfill the the sort of the promise of the American dream that, that everyone time. can have a house, right? right. And, and everyone can dream. afford, right? Right. Where does where did that get us today? It's to the oh, next yeah. slide here, to there. Right. And this is driving out, you know, east even more. This is in Waimanalo. You can see the housing of the suburban nomads here. Mm -hmm. And next slide is this is what Obama will face, who has bought, I think there's no rumor anymore, yeah. and we've been talking quite a bit, the old Magnum PI mansion. Yes. And me driving by, I was uh, positively surprised that the actual sort of tiny home tradition of Thomas Magnum having right. lived in the guest house has right. not right. been torn down. Yeah. So I'm seeing. Maybe he wants to host some of these some <laughs> urban nomads and that way, you know, do diligence right. to that pressing problem right. that right. he has. Right. And next slide here is we are going up uh, Mauka of Obama's right. side and with the Department of Tropical Plants and Soil Science test sort of a budget of a fraction of what all these homes cost. We're shooting for the $3,000 politically, polemically, because that's what a shipping container costs. And right. then we line them up in a row. You get one space right. for free. Right. Right. And that's what we want to shoot for. And you might say, well, no, we've been talking about celebrity today and about, you know, the big the, and the, the fancy and, and the, and the rich, movies. So right. what is sexy about that and what could be pop culturally interested about that? And with that one, we phase out and go to the last slide here. Well, what you're saying and I'm saying is what's remarkable is we've got some extremely well-to-do, now very popular, very powerful people mm -hmm. who came from here, who came from very humble roots. We've got Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, and we've got Bruno Mars who are now big deals. Mm -hmm. And do they want to come invest themselves and their money back where they came from for this type of purpose? Exactly. And could they be convinced to do that? Mm -hmm. We hope so. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're trying to say. So with that, we're at the end of the show. And if we can get the camera back to studio here while Correct. you hold up the, pro the card, the promotional card for DOCOM for our symposium here, please attend the symposium as much as you can. I think we kind of reopen registration. So please go there and uh, we see you guys next time for our new show, Human Human Architecture. And until then, please stay inclusively, tropically, exotically modern. Bye bye.